Hello, everybody. Welcome to the second DL talk of Distinguished Lecturer Webinar Series organized by IEEE EDS Buet SB Chapter. The talk will be on the wonderful world of designer germanium quantum dots. Our speaker, Dr. Pei Win Lee, is already with us. Let me introduce Dr. Lee with you. Pei Win Lee received her PhD degree from Columbia University in New York City in electrical engineering in 1994. She is a professor in Institute of Electronics and served as the director of Nano Facility Center at National Xiao Tang University in Hechingsu. Prior to joining NCTU in 2015, she has been the distinguished professor, the chair of electrical engineering department, director of nanoscience and technology, and associate dean of academic affairs in National Center University. She was a research visiting scholar with, with Caltech in 2000. 11 and 12. She has also worked with Vanguard International Semiconductor Corporation on DRAM technology integration in 1995 to 1996. Our research themes focus on experimental silicon germanium nanostructures and devices encompassing germanium quantum dot single electron tra transistors, photodetectors, non-volatile memory, and energy-saving harvest devices, making use of self-assembly nanostructures in silicon integration technology. She is an IEEE distinguished lecturer and serves VLSI technology and educational committees of IEEE EDS. She has served on various important conference committees like IEEE SNW, IEEE EDTM, SSDTM, etc. She is also the editor board member of Applied Physics, a material science and processing stranger. She was awarded Distinguished Professor from Chinese Electrical Engineering Society in 2015 and top 10 rising stars in Taiwan from Central New Agencies in 200, 2008. So we are really glad to have her as distinguished lecturer of this webinar series. We are really excited to get an insight of the topic from such an expert of this field. Please feel free to put your questions in the chat box uh, during the talk. There will be a question and answer session at the last of the event. Your active participation is highly encouraged. With any further delay, I would like to request Dr. Lee to take over the floor. And I would also like to take permission from her if we could continue to record our meeting during the talk. Okay. Um... Thanks, uh, Sammy's uh, introduction. So I would like to share my screen. So would you please uh, uh, allow me to share my screen mm -hmm. right now? Yes, actually, I have already made you the co-host. You can share it. Okay. So uh, I'm going to start my talk. Uh, would you give me uh, one minute? Yes, sure. Okay. Take your Thank time. You very much. Hi, good evening. I'm Tai Wen Li from NYCU, Taiwan. First of all, I would like to thank the invitation and the organization of Professor Yuyi for my DL talk. In this talk, I'm going to report our designer German quantum dots and their portfolio of electronic, photonic, and quantum devices. This is the all of my talk, which will start with a brief review of the context of quantum dots and their applications. Next, I would like to introduce our proposed theory application approach drawing spherical shaped quantum bars within some company layers in a self organized matrix. This is achieved by the selective oxidation of patent silicon germanium structures. We have discovered several new and counterintuitive findings from our germanium quantum bars including the nitride and the silicon penetration by the germanium quantum dots, which in turn
Uh, I'm sorry, there was something wrong with my uh, presentation. I would like to uh, resume my presentation in a minute. I'm sorry. It's okay, Dr. Lee. Uh, take your time. Uh, many yeah. defects. Yes, yes, sure. Thank you. This is the outline of my talk, which will start with a brief review of silicon based quantum bars and their applications. Next, I would like to elaborate our proposed CMOS fabrication approach for growing speed shaped germanium quantum bars with in silicon company layers in a self organized manner. This is achieved by the selective oxidation of patent silicon germanium structure. We have discovered several new and counterintuitive findings from our germanium quantum bars, including the nitride and the silicon penetration by the germanium quantum bars, which in turn mediates the densification of the silicon nitride and the formation of the silicon germanium sheets, respectively. The appeal of our designer germanium quantum bar approach lies in the morphological shape. Process control size tunability, strength engineering, and the most importantly, placement in the desired locations. This novel engineering advantage allows us to create diverse quantum devices, including light emitters, photomosphates, single electron transistors, and the junctionless MOSFETs. Finally, I will conclude my talk. For zero-dimensional quantum bar, the three-dimensional confinement potential results in discrete, real separate energy levels, which are symmetrical in all radius range. The most attractive property of quantum bar is their size tunable electronic structures. That is, when the quantum bar size is smaller than your ball radius, the energy level separation will dramatically increase by decreasing the quantum bar size. Thereby, size tunable quantum bars with predictable electronic structures of a wide ranging device applications. Nowadays, quantum bar technology has expanded many innovative applications in imaging sensing, electronics, quantum information, and renewable energies, which are, are, are not achievable using conventional bulk materials alone. So the holy grail uh, for a quantum bar industry is to achieve scalability, low precise control, and the repeatable fabrication of quantum bars with desired shape, size, and the placement for predictable electrical and optical properties. Recently, silicon-based quantum bar has emerged as the subject of intensive research, not only for the promise of scalability, but also for their ease of manufacturing using existing VLSI technologies. However, fabricating silicon quantum bars with a controllable quantum bar, quantum bar size and the predictable quantum confinement effects has proven challenging due to the small bore radius of five nanometer in silicon. In contrast, Thanks to higher Dijon constant and more effective mass in Germany, a larger ball radius of 24 nanometer in Germany enables easier modification of Germanian quantum bar devices structures, imposing less stringent demands on the lithographic control as compared to the silicon quantum bar fabrications. Also, the coexistence of long electron spin time and the strong spin orbit coupling in Germanian allows electrical, electrically driven manipulation for fast operation. To date, silicon based quantum bar are produced mostly using self assembly growth and the lithographic pattern. While it is relatively easy to create self assembly quantum bars using bottom up artificial growth. However, their random spatial distribution and non uniform size make it difficult to form electrical contact to specific components. On the other hand, top down lithographic patterning 
I have better control over the quantum dark place, but it is difficult to produce a small millimeter scale quantum bars, even using the most advanced graphic techniques available. So the most promising approach for controllably producing small quantum bars at the designated locations appear to grow quantum bar on pre-patent structures. We have demonstrated a CMOS compatible fabrication approach for the formation of spherical germanium quantum bar with in silicon containing layers, including the silicon dioxide, silicon nitride, and the silicon in a self-organized manner. Our germanium quantum bar were created using the selective oxidation of patent polysilicon germanium structures over buffer layers of nitride on top of silicon substrate. This buffer layer nitride is designed to provide local sources for silicon interstitials, which facilitates the coalescence and directs the migration of germanium nanocrystals to the desired locations during the subsequent thermal oxidation process. Basically, the formation of our germanium quantum bars involves two major mechanisms. One is the stack of selective oxidation of the silicon germanium alloy due to a large difference in the heat formation of silicon dioxide and the germanium dioxide. The second is the fast or ripening process, by which larger germanium nuclei is grown at the expense of the smaller and stable nuclei. Our extensive T and the EDAS observation shows a high evolution of serious polar thermal oxidation um, of polysilicon germanium pillar over the silicon nitride and silicon substrate. Basically, thermal oxidation of silicon germanium results in the prevention oxidation of its silicon content, converting it to silicon dust. While germanium segregates and causes into the germanium nanocrystals within the resultant oxide matrix. Increasing the thermal oxidation plus time, the germanium nanocrystal clouds remarkably catalyze the local decomposition of the silicon buffer. This decomposition process reduces silicon interstitials, which in turn promotes the migration of germanium nanocrystals to their surrounding oxide matrix in the direction of the silicon interstitial concentration gradient over the silicon nitride layer. In current with their migration, germanium crystal growth size by host or ripening and accumulates in concrete. Our first interesting finding is the unique migration in quantum dark pillars containing layers, including silicon dioxide, nitride, and even silicon salt. Our extensive experimental observation allows us to propose a dynamic construction, construction mechanism near the quantum bar surface to resolve the unique penetration of germanium quantum bars. In brief, the presence of oxygen in the species supplied by the thermal oxidation in the interval. Migrating germanium quantum bars cause the silicon dioxide, the height of it, to decompose and uh, subsequently deform in its web. This is activated by the fact that the quantum bar catalyzes the local decomposition of the silicon nitride, releasing the silicon interstitials. The released silicon interstitials migrate along the quantum bar surface and they react with the surrounding oxide to create the volatile silicon monoxide, forming the void ahead of the quantum bar. In the meantime, the release the silicon interstitial, the SIO, also migrates and reacts with the surrounding uh, to the deep end of the germanium quantum bar and gets oxidized by the small oxidation ambient. The oxidation induces the volume extension behind the quantum bar to pair the quantum bar moving forward. The second interesting, interesting finding is that quantum bars assume its spherical shape since the unique migra migration behavior mechanically composed coupled the quantum bar from its surrounding matrix 
and thus allowing the quantum data shaping and service constructions. According to the Stokhnikov calculations, the quantum data has a spherical shape. There is a very little difference in the, uh, between the, the surface energies of the surface phase rate with 0, 0, 3, 1, 1, 0, and 0, 1, 1, 1. The spherical shape of the quantum data has a three dimensional symmetrical electrostatic potential, resulting in the atomic like orbitals, strong confinement that is desired for the quantum engineering. The third interesting finding is the formation of self organized spherical Jumini quantum dust silicon dioxide shear. Concurrent with the unique migration process, the Jumini quantum dust is accompanied with the formation of the conformal silicon dioxide shear. The quantum dust and the surrounding nitride layers of the quantum dust and the silicon, as it penetrates the nitride and the silicon layers respectively. The outside shear thickness is essentially determined by the dynamic equilibrium that exists between the local concentration of oxygen interstitials in the quantum dot and the nitride interface applied by the external oxygen ambient and the silicon interstitial released from the locally composing silicon nitride layer. So we observe there is approximately 1.5 million interstitials for more silicon oxide shear between the quantum dot and the nitride. Also, there appears a, a approximately two to three nanometer thick conformal oxide shear between the quantum dot and the underlying silicon substrate as it submerged into the silicon substrate. Another interesting finding is the quantum dot mediate the nitride as a region and the mineral crystallization. We observed that there's a much lower temperature, 800 to 900 degrees C, the penetrating germanium quantum dot mediates the local densification of the nominally amorphous silicon nitride layer by a phase transition from the amorphous to the little crystalline alpha phase stage. This is evidenced by the increased yields line scan, sharp uh, peak in the SRD spectrum, and the clear uh, fraction spots in the selective area electron diffraction pattern. This densification of nitride has a great amplification for the fabrication of high quality electronic and photonic devices by reducing the hydrogen induced trap and thus improving the leakage and absorption. Yes, another interesting discovery is that quantum dot automatically penetrates the substrate. It enables the simultaneous formation of self aligned conformal metal structures of germanium quantum dot, silicon dioxide shear, and the silicon germanium sheets on top of the silicon surface, thereby providing an ideal building block fabrication of the state for the germanium MOS devices. A conformal silicon germanium sheet is generated by interstitials breaking from the germanium quantum dot through the silicon dioxide shear and the dissolving within the silicon substrate. The so formed single crystallized silicon germanium sheet inherits its original crystal orientation of the silicon substrate and has a site dependent compressive strength as uh, evidenced by the electrical diffraction patterns. So, and the engineering advantage of our junior quantum dots lies in the controllably positioning size tunable spherical German quantum. Firstly, a single quantum dot is formed in each oxidized piece from the cross-sectional and the MBUTM observation. The quantum dot size is essentially determined by the germanium content of the original silicon germanium pattern structures, which is adjustable by controlling the geometric dimensions and 
the chemical compensation of the silicon germanium pillars. In this way, a reasonable range of classic controlled size ranging from 5 nanometer to 100 nanometer is achievable. The placement of our germanium quantum dot by design is facilitated by controlled heterogeneous nucleation and the growth is in the patent structure. Patent dependent oxidation and the ostwall ripening based migration behavior indeed offer additional mechanisms for controlling our germanium quantum dot locations. Our extensive um, observation showed that the segregated germanium nuclei to form at the patent age, where the large geometric curvatures and the high film stress occur. Typical examples include the formation of germanium quantum dot in serious by thermal oxidation of the polycyclic germanium structure. For instance, two germanium quantum dot by oxidizing the silicon germanium in the rock and the um, single quantum dot oxidation of silicon germanium uh, nano pillars. And we are able to form multiple germanium quantum dots by a specially designed polygonal silicon germanium structures. For instance, three germanium quantum dots within a triangle silicon germanium cavity, four quantum dots within a square, and the five quantum dots within a pentagon. And also, we are able to adjust the geometrical conditions and the silicon germanium structures to form a single quantum dot in the center of our style structures. And also, using the silicon germanium spacer technology, we are able to form a series of the germanium quantum dot line up with each other, and uh, uh, also uh, all the two quantum dots within a uh, field. Uh, Another engineering advantage is the size-dependent magnetic strain engineering in our germanium quantum dot. Bowman spectroscopy shows that the local host materials of silicon dioxide and silicon nitride imposes the tensile and the compressed strains respectively in the germanium quantum dot. These are evidence. These are evidenced by a systematic red shift and the blue shift the Raman spec uh, frequency respectively as compared to the bulk germanium, bulk peak, uh, germanium peak. When the quantum dot size uh, is smaller than 6 nanometer, quantum confinement form on effect sets in, and that this induces a systematic redshift in the wave, wave number of the germanium phonon phonon lines. So actually, our germanium quantum dot has many, many uh, wide-ranging applications. The first application is for the uh, silicon photonics for the optical interconnect. In the past six decades, following the Moore's law, we have aggressively shrunk the size of devices and transistors in order to boost the IC performance. However, in line with the downscaling from end transistors, the reduction in the size of the metal wires and the increase in the metal wire lengths have led to extremely higher uh, RC delay and a higher power dissipation. Uh, it's important to know that the cooling loads, which assume duration per energy, increase at a faster rate than the more rate of uh, then the most low no longer holds as, uh, since uh, uh, 2005. And the operation per unit energy start to fall off, creating a larger gap between the practice and the theory. So actually, the photonic space computing is less energy and can transmit data faster than the conventional uh, metal wire approach. But the cost manufacturing silicon integrated circuits with embedded photonics elements held back progress. And the decades of research and development are now finally paying off the silicon electronics, which is important for the data center 
achieved in the ROT applications. In 2009, IBM has proposed an optical decompensation supercomputer is in the tonic layer, not only connect the multiple core, multiple core, but also roster traffic. And the Intel has also demonstrated the prototype on chip optical interconnect. Therefore, the holistic integration of silicon photonics and electronics on silicon platform becomes a must. Nowadays, silicon photonics is mainly building on the SOI software, opening up a wide ranging application, not only for the data center, but also for 5G and the diverse, diverse applications, such as LIDAR, biosensing, and image. However, there are pros and cons for the silicon photonics on the SOI platform. The good thing for the SOI silicon photonics is high index. As between the silicon, uh, silicon and silicon oxide. So, this enables a much better optical confinement within the silicon guide, the silicon dioxide creating layers, and a much reduced these lengths and curvature of the silicon. So, that we have a small factor, form factor of the silicon tonic devices, and the higher packing density for important thing is that the SOI silicon is most compatible with the electronic The small silicon guy may be very sensitive to the millimeter scale geometrical variations in the fabrication, including the film thickness, the pattern width, and the line edge fluctuation. Also, it requires a micrometer scale alignment precision and it's possible to induce the large loss in the visible wavelengths into the silicon materials. So, for the SOI silicon photonics, it is not available for the visible wavelengths in the IoT applications. Recently, there are great demands on the migration from the SOI platform the silicon nitride platform for the silicon photonics. For instance, there are uh, a multiple project with wafer service delivering silicon photonic integrated circuits by IMAC, PT, IHP, ME, based on the SI platform and the silicon nitride waveguide. Why? Why we need a silicon nitride platform for the silicon photonic crystal, uh, photonic uh, devices? This is because the silicon nitride is parent in the visible lens, which is not accessible for the silicon waveguide. And also the broad index contrast for the silicon nitride and silicon oxide um, enable the fabrication and the, uh, ease the alignment of the silicon nitride photonics, which induce much uh, loss, uh, absorption loss. And also in silicon nitride, the two photon absorption is equal to zero. So that is suitable for the high optical power applications. And also the less temperature sensitivity, and vacuum flexibility, and the seamless compatibility, and the silicon nitride platform, a good idea, a good platform for the silicon photon. However, so far, there is no fast optical active devices so far demonstrated on the silicon nitride platform. In fact, our designer Jimin Quantum Bar offered a good uh, platform to fabricate Jimin Quantum Bar uh, photonic devices on the nitride platform. Under with the knowledge of our designer Jimin Quantum Bar, we have fabricated the array with a of size uniformity for silicon nitride with a disk in quantum meter. Able to uh, observe size tunable photodomic peaks ranging from 50 nanometer to 115 uh, to 1515 nanometer. 
that is from the near ultraviolet through the visible light to the near infrared by adjusting the quantum dot size from three nanometer to 90 nanometer. Also, we observe the major the aston lifetime of a large increase by decreasing the quantum dot size. And uh, both the PL peak uh, energies and the aston lifetime appear to inversely proportional to the quantum dot diameter, that is the quantum dot surface area, providing a strong testament for the quantum complement effect. We are able to conduct the nitride strain engineering on the, uh, in the germanium quantum dots by adjusting the suitable nitride adaptation process. We have compared the proximal layer of LPCBD nitride and the PECD nitride on the strain property of the germanium quantum dots. We observe the size dependent Rana spectroscopy show that compared to the LPCBD nitride, PECVD nitride matrix imposes a much lower complex stress, especially for the larger uh, germanium quantum dots. And the difference in the blue shift for germanium quantum dot embedded within the silicon uh, LPCVD nitride and the PECVD nitride decreases when the quantum dot diameter are smaller than the 60 nanometer. And imposes Trends become identical for the quantum dot with the diameter less than 40 nanometer. So we are able to express the aston lifetime within the 40 nanometer quantum dots that is increased from the 1 to 29 nanometer per second to uh, 3 nanosecond and to 5 nanosecond. And change the local stressor from the silicon nitride to locally remove the nitride into the growing oxygen. And from the quantum dot diameter gets smaller, the quantum confinement effect sets in and has a predominant influence on our aston lifetimes. We have also observed the uh, thermal stability of our PL intensity and the aston lifetimes appear to be improved by decreasing the quantum dot diameter and removing the local nitride stage. And again, the aston lifetime appear to be inversely uh, increased by decreasing the quantum dot size, which is a strong testament of the quantum confinement. Actually, not only the quantum light emitter, we have also incorporated the quantum dot ray into the day state of no state which enables simultaneous detection by the germanium bus and the electrical amplification within the silicon germanium sheet silicon channel respectively within a single device. It is clearly seen that uh, under the uh, A15 nanometer uh, illumination, a large increase in the photo current is increasing the incident power illumination. And the very low dark current um, on the order of picoM per micrometer is achieved within our germanium quantum dark photo MOSFET. Very, very high photocurrent gain and photoresponsivity are obtained in our MOSFET. Actually, uh, when we increase the uh, wave, wavelengths of the illumination from A50 to the middle light region to uh, 1310 or 1550 for the near IR region. It's clear we still can get very uh, high photo current gain when we increasing uh, illumination density. We also observe that the responsivity and the frequency is size dependent on the quantum. So when we quantum uh, uh, Diameter, we can increase the responsivity and the 3D, uh, 3D frequency. So, for all germanium quantum dot, actually, we have very, very high photo responsivity in the uh, quantum dot photo MOSFET operating in the on state, and the very large power in the and the high photo current gain 
the quantum atmosphere is operating in the off state. We have also examined the interface of the origin in quantum dioxide dioxide and silicon chimineal shares using the CV main on the most capacitors. The extracted or uh, trap density is as low as 3 times 10 to 11 per centimeter square per electron volt. And the estimated interface chart number for a 10 nanometer junior quantum bar unity or even less than the quantum bar size is smaller. In fact, the simplicity and the elegance of a single silver mine in quantum bar silicon dioxide and the silicon junior is has a structure very conductive application of the germanium gauge, the germanium chain FET on top of this one. So in this way, we are able to directly modulate the potential of the local silicon germanium channel through a three nanometer thick silicon dioxide in the silver light germanium quantum gauge. The area of the germanium quantum in contact with the SO5 directly determine the channel length the release of the MOSFET. And the gas state of the junior quantum dioxide sheets is not only vertically aligned, self-aligned, but also laterally self-aligned with the content connecting silicon source and the drain. So uh, this uh, shows that a very sharp peak of the silicon germanium structures, providing a good evidence on the good crystal linearity of the silicon germanium channel. The period of the outside integrity and the high degree of the crystallinity within the silicon germanium sheets is a very high on of curvature greater than into eight for the junction of FET, so the channel is approximately 17 nanometer, and a very, very high on um, uh, and current uh, on the order of the mm per millimeter is achieved in our junior quantum uh, uh, FEPs, which are uh, superior as compared to our, our previous work. Our German quantum uh, are able to be applicable for silicon based quantum computing. The concept of quantum computing was proposed in the early 1980s based on the quantum superposition the quantum entanglement. In principle, viable candidate for the implementation of quantum computation meets the following requirements. It was classified by Devin Singh in 2008. First is the quantum register. It's a scalable uh, with well-guided states representing the qubit. The second, the ability to initialize the state of the qubit in a non-initial state. And also, we should be able to implement the universal states or quantum logic again. It's long decoherence time, but it's much longer than the gate operation time. And also, the reliable readout to measure the states of the individual qubit. Basically, any two-level quantum mechanical system is used as a qubit. There are several approaches to physical implementation of qubits, including a superconductor, a spin or charge, the ions, and the photons. Each one has its own figure and merit in terms of the qubit size, identity, operating speed, manufacturing, durability, operation temperature, and the demonstrated entangled qubit. Among which the silicon based spin qubit are particularly attractive for its um, the small size, reasonable fidelity, and the reasonable speed, uh, speed, and the manufacturing using the CMOS technology. Currently, the major player for the quantum computing technology include IBM and Google. They have announced the qubit with numbers as high as 72 based on the superconducting circuit. Also, 
Intel has reported a silicon spin qubit by the year 2018 based on the silicon silicon germanium DNG heterostructures. structures. If I uh, use a uh, demonstrate a full, uh, eight, uh, full uh, 12 inch silicon wafer with the uh, electrical testing chip uh, uh, with up to 26 qubit that lie on the spin of individual electrons in the silicon germanium quasi quantum dot. Silicon based qubit are our favorite because they can be manufactured using the mature uh, CMOS fabrication technology. And they promise to be stable in operation and uh, compact in the footprint. Also, they are able to be built out using the CMOS control electron circuits. And they are possible to be operated with high temperature energy. Currently, the quantum degree of freedom for the silicon based qubit include the charge qubit and the spin qubit, which are based on the Kura K uh, principle using the charge or spin respectively. There are two potential ways to build, up, to build a quantum computer from the silicon uh, substrate. One is the donor nuclei embedded within the silicon. The their outermost electron might be read using the single electron transistor. The states of the gate will be used to set the state of the qubit and control their interaction. Another uh, possible way and uh, potentially easier to fabricate on large scale is the quantum dust. Uh, there are way to build up the, the silicon based quantum dot. One is the electrostatic gate defined quantum dot based on a two dimensional electron phase or two dimension, two dimensional whole gates using the silicon silicon germanium or silicon germanium germanium heterostructure. Another is built on the physical divide quantum dot using the SOI heterostructure or use the physically defined germanium quantum dot. And the inherent structure simplicity of our silver organized germanium quantum dot, data dioxide shear, also powers to fabricate germanium quantum dot single hole transistors with silver aligned electrons. This is done by the uh, selective oxidation of a single polysilicon germanium plug composed within a nitride silicon change. So we can see very sharp oscillatory current peak is peak to value ratio as high as 70, uh, 750 for achieved for our base nanometer junior quantum dot single hole transistors. And the last half of the operation in the fuel hole region with large emission energy, uh, greater than 100 uh, milli electron volts at the room temperature. And the very sharp current oscillatory aspect. The uh, current oscillation and the current staircase, or even the uh, negative differential conductors, were observed. Slide shows the well resolved autonomy current spectroscopy and the superior charge stability at the measurement temperature ranging from 70-70K to 150K. And uh, this indicates that our Jupiter quantum dots operate in a few hole regime the are efficient the charge sensing. The extract single hole engaged energy is greater than 25 millimeter. Um, uh, it's very suitable for the high temperature operation. Our design of Jupiter quantum dot indeed increase the freedom of fabricating quantum electronic devices. Using a combined, combined lithographic patterning and self-assemble growth, are able to form pair of the double quantum dots that are closely uh, coupled and controllably located. The core experimental design is the thermal oxidation of the poly silicon germanium space island inside a each side wall corner of the silicon nitride silicon leaf. So using the nano space technology and the thermal oxidation, we are able to form Double quantum dots. And it is important to note that 
uh, 1.5 nanometer thick silicon dust I share between the silicon ridge and the germanium quantum dust is an inherent covering barrier for the double quantum dust. And the intervening silicon ridge between the double quantum dust facilitates the electrically electrical tunability of exchange interactions between the PQDs. Also, the keeping oxide layer generated from the thermal oxidation of the silicon germanium iron and the inherent uh, toning barrier between the silver light electrodes and the quantum dust. So the uh, plain view and the cross-sectional PEM observation as well as the EDAS uh, observation examinations confirm we are able to form the paired mean double quantum dust with the self-aligned inherent common barrier of the silicon dioxide and the, the, the oxide shears. By suitably adjusting the process time of a conform multiplication, the reaction back, and the selective oxidation of polysilicon germanium space island, we are, have a good quality in the quantum dust and the interdust as a reproducible and the uh, uniformity of the dot. You can see that the process control in the quantum dot size on the 20 nanometer, 20 nanometer. And the interdust is from 75 nanometer to 12 nanometer. Then we reduce the width of the silicon ridge and uh, increase the thermal oxidation time. And thanks to the high controllability combination of the space of fabrication, isographic patterning, and the thermal oxidation processes, highly asymmetrical reproducible pair German quantum dust were created in terms of the quantum dust size, position, and the in dust space. Also, we are able to uh, deposit the polysilicon layer over the entire double quantum dust and the form the polysilicon space electrodes. Convincing results point to ultimately achieving the goal of simultaneous formation of a multiple closely coupled quantum dust at the included angle location of the silicon nitride silicon ridge with the spatially designed thin out structures. So that we are able to have a high degree of symmetry Nice tunability, uniformity, and participability in our dot diameter and the position, the dot spacing, as well as the keeping oxide thickness. So after a suitable uh, electrical uh, process, we are able to form self-aligned uh, quantum dot array with the self-organized uh, uh, electrodes for the qubit applications. So, conclusion, we have taken advantage of the many peculiar and the symbolic interaction of the silicon, germanium, and the oxygen interstitials for size tunable germanium's critical quantum dots in the desired spatial locations. Our designer germanium quantum dot therefore offer a large parameter space in which we can design the novel portfolio of the electronic, electronic the quantum electronic devices inside the reconfigurability. We increase this further scientifically uh, scientific exploration of our quantum dot over the ultimate goal of demonstrating the most integratable functional devices for practical applications. Okay, and that's it. Uh, that's my uh, presentation. Thank you, Lee, for your descriptive uh, presentation. Uh, we'll now begin our question and answer session. Please feel free to ask any questions. You may put your questions in the comment box. We could read it out for you, or you may raise your hands and we will give you the floor to ask the questions. Uh, okay, actually, I have seen uh, some questions uh, mentioned in the, uh, uh, the message. Yeah, so maybe yes. I should uh, uh, reply such a question first. 
Yes, the first sure. question is uh, from, uh, I, I don't know my, my pronunciation is, is correct or not. So if, if I'm wrong, please correct me. It's from uh, Rahaman. Uh, we know resonant tunneling dials with single electron transistor can be used as very fast oscillator. And uh, I need an uh, oscillator for solving a uh, combinational optimization problem. So is it possible to design chip using both uh, RTD and the CMOS? Uh, if no, do they need to, to different fabrication process? Okay, actually um, it depends on the, the, what kind of the RTD you are using. If you are using the uh, silicon based or germanium based, uh, uh, I, I mean the silicon based or germanium based quantum dial RTD, actually using our method is possible to integrate with the CMOS uh, transistor or CMOS circuit. So it depends on the fabrication process. If your process is compatible to the CMOS uh, fabrication process, so the RTD actually is possible to integrate to the CMOS uh, devices. Okay, that is my uh, answer to uh, uh, this one. Is the possible RTD to, uh, uh, to and uh, uh, CMOS to be used simultaneously for the chip design? Okay, that's the first question. I hope I have answered your question. And um, the second one, oh, oh, the second one actually is, um, it's not for a question to me, it's just uh, uh, ask uh, everybody to sign in the evaluation form. So, and the second question, okay. Um, the quantum dots are confined in three dimensional space and how we use it generally. Um, actually the quantum dot, you are right, quantum dots are confined in the three uh, dimensional space. And it is uh, it has a, a, a conformal shear like the silicon dioxide uh, for our case. Uh, the germanium quantum dot uh, is embedded within the silicon dioxide or silicon nitride. So uh, the silicon dioxide or silicon nitride performs uh, can be known as a, 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 a naturally uh, tunneling barriers. So that uh, it can be formed uh, quantum dot with a three dimensional confinement barrier. And uh, after we put the electro closely coupled to the uh, quantum dot by the uh, coupling base, so it can form the resonant diode, as I mentioned previously, or we can form the single electron transistors. So the charge can go into the tongue quantum dot by the tunnel. And it depends on if the, uh, the uh, energy level of the source or the drain get in resonance with the quantum dot energy label or not. And I hope I have answered your questions. So- uh, Thank you, ma'am, for your it. answer. Yeah, so I, that's why I saw uh, uh, two questions. So is there any other comments or questions? Uh, if there are any questions? Uh, ma'am, I have a general query. Yep. Uh, does the direct and indirect band gap of uh, materials affect quantum dots anyway? Uh, yes, uh, I have mentioned uh, there is a bow radius for each material. Uh, the the bow radius means that when the uh, dimension, the size of the material uh, is, is downscaling to less than the bow radius, which means that the discrete energy level will appear instead of the, the uh, bank, uh, bank gap uh, as the, in the conventional materials. So if we can reduce the uh, um, size of the quantum dot to less than its bow radius, for instance, for the germanium, the bow radius is uh, about 25 nanometer. So which means that if we can reduce the quantum dot size less than 25 nanometer, then its electronic structure will become like a discrete energy label instead of the uh, band gap. And also the size, as long as the size is much, much less than the bow radius, then the discrete energy level will become much uh, uh, well separated. And the level separation between each level is uh, highly dependent on the quantum dot size. So that we are able to tune 
the energy level separation by adjusting the quantum dust size. Okay, ma'am, thank you. Okay, is there any questions? Uh, I think uh, there are no more questions. So we can actually conclude uh, this event. Uh, we are really lucky to have Dr. Lee among us. It's been a pleasure to host the meeting. We got to know really some interesting steps of the quantum dust worlds, which will surely inspire us in our uh, later research works. Our advisor, Dr. Dr. Ahmed Dubaisa could not have been uh, come today, but he has a small token of appreciation uh, for you. I, I, could you please share the screen and give uh, so th this is a small piece of token of appreciation from our uh, advisor, Dr. Ahmed Jubai, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. So yeah, actually, <laughs> because of uh, uh, COVID situation, we could really arrange this uh, type of uh, international program. Uh, it's been actually really honor that you came and given a, a excellent speech on the matter. Uh, in some time, we may invite you in person when the situation improves. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, you are, will be most welcome if you join our meeting. Yeah, yeah I, I hope we can uh, visit your campus uh, in person in the show uh, near future. Uh, I, I wish the, uh, you and uh, your uh, professor and your family uh, can stay uh, well safe and uh, uh, well taken care, in particularly in such a difficult period of the COVID-19. So I'm very glad to, to meet you uh, online and I'm glad to share our uh, research results to you. And I appreciate very much your valuable comment and questions. So maybe uh, in the uh, uh, near future, you can come to Taiwan and uh, visit our campus, which is located in Xinzhu uh, uh, city, that is very close to the uh, industrial science park. We have many uh, famous uh, well company like TSMC, uh, uh, like the um, uh, UMC, etc. So I hope we, uh, we can see you in Xinzhu in Taiwan or in India. Okay, it's really good to hear that. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, okay, so, so uh, now we will take a group photo and conclude our event. So if you don't have any problem, please put your camera on. We'll take a screenshot. Okay, I'm taking the photo. Okay, thank you everybody. Uh, let's uh, conclude our meeting now. And again, thank you, okay, thank you, Dr. Lee. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.